Hello everyone, uh, just going to quickly talk a little bit about uh, some calibration stuff that I've been doing with the machine. Uh, basically what I've done here is I've milled out this basically slot around the outside and bored four holes. The way the layout is, let's see if we can get this to focus in properly or not, but six inches square on the outside and then I bore four holes that are three and three quarters of an inch center to center. What that does is with the pins that I have, they're quarter inch pins and actually the pins are pieces of uh, solid carbide precision ground to a minus one to a minus four tenths of a thousandths so they're very precise and what I did then was had them ground with a slight taper at both ends uh, reduction of diameter about three to five thousandths um, and what that does is is it allows me to take and easily set them into the bore and it's like self-aligning because the diameter at the tip is smaller allows me to easily slide them in and since I know I'm within a few tenths of a tolerant of a, of a thousandths tolerance on the diameter of the pins then I can use a pair of calipers and measure it to the outside. So the outside measurements should come out at four inches. Then it also gives me a chance to measure my diagonal position, which should be 5.5533, something like that, to there. And that gives me an idea as to my racking or alignment of the Y axis to the X axis. So with a pair of calipers, basically, I'll see if I can do this one handed or not. Let me uh, just set this down here. <clears throat> With a pair of calipers, then I can come along and just measure the distance between the pins this way. And I can do that on both sets of pins. That tells me um, that these two distances are being the same. And then I can measure lengthwise this way along the x-axis, both pins, take a measurement, average the two, and then I can measure the diagonal this way, and then I can measure the diagonal this way, and then take a measurement. From there, I can then tell um, how my machine's calibrated fairly close, and... I know from this particular test piece, the measurement come out to be about 3.996 on the X between the pins and 3.993 on the Y. Now, when I measured across the pins from the left top to the left bottom, I got uh, 5.552, and then from here to here, I got 5.542. So, in laying that out then, in CAD, basically it comes out to about 1.43 degrees that the axis is sitting this way. Um, so, if I measure from the inside of this position to the other side of that position, I think it's like 54 inches and um, I'd have to measure it again to be sure. But then when I lay it out in CAD, I see from the outside position over there to the outside position over here, I have a variation of about 145 thousandths. So what I did was, i bring the axis up here. I brought the axis up with the motors on so it locks into place. I then see if I can get in here or not uh, but I took some shim stock uh, loosened up all my bolts with the motor still on locked in place uh, slid some shim stock down in here on both sides on this side to kind of give it a little bit of a kilter um, to kind of move the axis uh, beam over back out of the way and then with that done I basically ran this side up because this uh, side seemed to be the leading side and touched off the bumper and then turned the motors off 
and this side having it this side having a gap then and then turn the uh, shaft on the motor up until uh, I got good contact here and uh, basically for that I just used the one of these yellow stickies they're about three thousand so you can put it in between and you can move things and then use it as a touch off so having done that uh, then turn the power back on and then hopefully this will have uh, got myself into uh, an alignment where it's fairly accurate now how to uh, adjust your accuracy is you want to go to your settings page in mock and then down here there is sets uh, there's a steps per unit axis calibration if you click on that that comes a screen to calibrate the axes. So in this particular case, we'll start with the x-axis, which I've already done this, so the information I'm going to put back in is exactly the same. So how would you far would you like to move? Key in uh, four inches because that's my measurement, and hit OK. And basically, your machine moves four inches. Then it asks you how much your axis moved, and then you'll key in the amount. Um, in this case, uh, I've already calibrated it and <clears throat> you'll see my axis number is different. I originally had 1020 in there. Now it's reading like 1019.6096 uh, whatever. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna change this and I'm not because I've already run the calibration but that's basically how you do it. You select the steps per calibration. Uh, you can check your A axis, Z axis, A, B, and C axis if you have more than three axes on there. And we'll cancel that out. But that's basically, real quickly, how you uh, simply make those measurements and adjust the machine. So, having made uh, the adjustments to the axes and then also uh, having put the shim stock in there, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is go ahead and run uh, my little test program. What it does is it comes in and it slots down at a ramp, comes around the corner, around the outside, and then it steps over 30 thousandths back in because it's cutting oversize, comes back around, qualifies the outside edge, comes over and bores the four holes, uh, and that's the, basically the end of the program. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, and run that so I can take some more measurements. Uh, we'll get the spindle turned on. And I'm going to run this at 24,000 RPMs. The uh, feed rate is about 72 inches a minute, um, <clears throat> which equates to about a thou and a half per tooth. It's a tooth loop quarter inch end mill. So we should be able to just go ahead and hit and run. We'll be able to see it make those cuts. Now bear with me one second, but I'll clean a little bit of the sawdust up.
get these pins moved over. And get my calipers. Make sure they're set to zero. Take a measurement across here. And I'm measuring about uh, 3.998. Let me check that again. Depends on how much you want to press on it. It comes out pretty close to 4 inches. Double check this one. And about 4 inch 5 tenths. This direction. Uh, about 3.999. In this direction, it's about uh, four inches, so we're thin, probably about a half a thou. Of course, this is only about as accurate as uh, five tenths, so within a thousandth. Plus, it's carbon; it's not carbon uh, fiber; it's not steel. So, depends about how much you want to push on it. Now, we're supposed to measure 5.553 across. And I've got, let's see here, 5.553, and I've got 5.553. So, that actually worked out pretty good, a little better than what I was anticipating. So, that being said, it looks like right now, the way I have everything, uh, I'm running square, and I'm within probably a half a thou. So I'm very pleased with that. So um, what I'll do is I'll post then the uh, little layout for this uh, calibration thing. If, if there's anything that uh, anybody wants to try and use that to do the same kind of thing. Um, you can put whatever size pins you want in here. But you probably want to get something that's qualified on size. If you get some rod you could use quarter, three eighths, half inch, whatever you want to do. Just change your dimensions or change your measurement position. Uh, to the new uh, length that you need um, and then use the appropriate size end mill uh, to bore the hole and uh, should be good to go I mean this isn't the greatest for accuracy because it's a very small area that we're checking in uh, one of these days I plan on buying a bigger set of calipers maybe a uh, 24 inch pair so then I'll be able to go take like two inch measure two foot measurements which should definitely be better so all in all, uh, I'm pleased with the adjustments, and so far it looks like we're in uh, pretty good alignment. Start ready to make some parts at some point. Thanks for watching.